intention for today's Mass is for Gail Califano. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. My friends, as we gather together today on this Friday, this penitential day in the month of the Holy Souls, on the feast day of St. Charles Borromeo, let us call to mind our sins that we may be better prepared to enter into these sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie Let us pray. Preserve in the midst of your people, we ask, O Lord, the spirit with which you filled the Bishop St. Charles Borromeo, that your church may be constantly renewed, and by conforming herself to the likeness of Christ, may show his face to the world who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Join with the others in being imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and observe those who thus conduct themselves according to the model you have in us. For many, as I have often told you, and now tell you even in tears, conduct themselves as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is their destruction, their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their minds are occupied with earthly things, but our citizenship in heaven, and from it we also await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for my joy and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, beloved. The word of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks for the name of the Lord, in it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, a rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, what is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to himself, what shall I do? Now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me, I am not strong enough to dig and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do so that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, how much do you owe my master? He replied, 100 measures of olive oil. He said to him, here is your promissory note. Sit down and quickly write one for 50. Then to another he said, and you, how much do you own? He replied, 100 measures of wheat. He said to him, here is your promissory note. Write one for 80. And the master commended that dishonest steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation than the children of light. The Gospel of the Lord. We're in the last few days of this year's election campaign cycle. And one thing I've noticed over the years is that during this, these last days, every time we have an election, many times the candidates begin changing their tactics. You know, they begin uh, uh, making more commercials. They bring in more celebrity big names to support them. They even start campaigning in areas they hadn't before. They, they sometimes change their message. Sometimes it's because they're falling behind and they want to try to catch up or shore up what they've been doing. Other times it's because they're doing well and they want to push into new areas of voters that perhaps they think they might have a shot at now because they're doing better. Whatever the reason, they tend to be adaptable and resourceful in trying to do what they need to do in order to achieve the same one goal, which is to win the election. Same goal, but different methods. St. Paul is really drawing upon that same idea in writing to his dear friends, the Philippians, in the first reading today, in regard to the spiritual life. He says that it's not enough, so to speak, to have the nomination, that you have to campaign in the spiritual life. It's not enough only for the Philippians, whom he evangelized and converted and baptized. They can't just do nothing. He speaks to them, he exhorts them in the language of change and growth and adapting and continually realigning themselves with their baptism. Why? Because of our, the effects of original sin, our fallen human nature is such that we cannot simply say, I'm baptized, I've embraced Christ, I've already declared myself before the world. I have to take care of what's inside of me as well. I have to adapt and change and discipline. He exhorts them to uh, not uh, conduct themselves uh, like those who are the enemies of the cross. He's really exhorting them to be a friend of the cross. That is, to cut out anything from their life that may distract them from, from their real interior growth in Christ. And he speaks about that, about changing, about conforming to the power of Christ in our lives. So our spiritual life, St. Paul often reminds us, is a constant process of growth, renewal, penance, and conforming ourselves to the power of Christ. It's that same quality of adaptability and resourcefulness that Christ commends in the gospel today. He's not commending the goal but he's saying that we should be equally resourceful and adaptable in 
living out our own Christian commitment. St. Charles Borromeo, whose feast is today, was a great saint of the Counter-Reformation and responsible for the, for the Reformation within his own clergy in, in, in the city of Milan. And there's a beautiful passage in the uh, uh, office for readings today fr from his exhortation to the priests telling them not just to celebrate Mass, but to prepare well to celebrate Mass and to live a life that is distraction free from anything that is distinct from Christ. That's good advice for, for every disciple of Christ. It's essentially what St. Paul is saying, and it's what our Lord recommends to us as a characteristic of everyone who wants to be a serious disciple of Christ, truly living out that baptismal grace that we have been given, that we not quander, squander it, but that we truly be a friend of the cross of Christ. Let us pray. We pray for the church that it may be consistently conformed to the cross of Christ in all things, including all her clergy and all faithful disciples of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who struggle to be conformed to the cross of Christ, that they may always know that the grace of Christ is available to them at all times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and the suffering, the needy and the poor, the despairing and the desperate, that they may find in the cross true hope and the power of Christ's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That during this period of decision-making for our own country, that people may choose wisely, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intention of today's Mass, for Gail Califano, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear the prayers we offer and grant us what we need through Christ our Lord. Amen. brethren, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, O Lord, upon the offering placed on your altar in commemoration of St. Charles Borromeo and grant by the power of this sacrifice that as you made him an attentive pastor, outstanding in the merit of his virtues, so you may make us abound in good fruit by our works. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Charles Borromeo you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. So 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Teresa of Avila, St. Charles Borromeo, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, 
give us that determination which made St. Charles Borromeo faithful in ministry and fervent in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to remain with us for the period of Eucharistic adoration now after the Mass. us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.
given them bread from heaven, containing in itself all delight. Let us pray. Lord our God, you have given us the true bread from heaven in the strength of this food. May we live always by your life and rise in glory on the last day. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The divine praises. Blessed be God, blessed be his holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be his most sacred heart, blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. May the heart of Jesus in the most blessed sacrament be praised, adored, and loved with grateful affection at every moment in all the tabernacles of the world even to the end of time, amen. <laughs> 